Hello, uh, my name is James Burton. Um, I work at World of the Games with a bunch of these guys that are around here. And uh, we're going to talk about um, the approach that we've kind of ended up going for when making uh, locomotion for AI in our new game. Mm -hmm. um, I'll go back. Oh. <laughs> so I should uh, say, like, I'm not the only person, or me and Johnny are not the only people working on this system. Um, all the people there, plus even Toby and our new intern, and I guess everyone in the studio has actually been involved in this process. Uh, and I should stress that I don't think we're pioneering anything. Uh, I think we just happen to end up figuring out a system that is probably used by a few people, but there's not that much information on how to get to these things, and especially not how to author the animations for this. Um, so we want to make something that was like super comprehensible uh, for people that are trying to tackle this. So now. Mm -hmm. So uh, the aims of uh, our system were we needed to, to be precise in terms of the AI actually reaching their target points. We, we kind of need them to reach specific points to play other animations from or stuff like that. So we needed precision. Um, we also wanted visual fidelity. It needed to look super good. Um, then we tried to stick to U4 defaults as much as possible. Uh, this is because we have one coder and he's doing a lot of other stuff. So we try to not make him have to do so much of the work. That was probably um, one of the most important things, was sticking to just out of the box on real as much as possible, not having to invent any sort of new pathfinding solutions or anything like that. Yeah. We want to stick to the, the way the nav mesh was generated on real and just use that uh, as vanilla as we could. Okay, and then uh, modularity. So it, the system had to work for all characters, um, which since that they're all bipeds is pretty straightforward. Uh, but uh, especially uh, if we take one part of the system out, it shouldn't break the system. And if we add other bits to the system, it shouldn't break the system either. So any layer that you add just kind of works independently. And if you take, it's non-dependent on the other layers, basically. Mm -hmm. So we considered a few approaches. Um, this was before we landed on the brilliant idea of the system that isn't that brilliant. But <laughs> Um, so we tried a root motion um, <coughs> capsule driven hybrid. This is because we wanted stuff to look really nice. Yep. So we tried root motion for turns, uh, and then the issue that we were having is that blending out of root motion would kill our velocity in the character. So if you look um, on the first image there, as he blends back into his walk, he kind of uh, stops moving for a second, and then he goes. So imagine him turning a corner and then having to stop in every corner. That wouldn't work. Uh, if we use no blends, it became really hard to control on the right hand side there, and you'd get snapping. We tried using things like sync groups and stuff to fix this. Um, we still don't know if we have a grasp of what sync groups are, but they're magic sometimes. Uh, it was never perfect, never did what we wanted it to. Um, and just how it should have been looking uh, on the bottom there, that's what we were trying to get for 90 degree turns. Um, so that, that bottom GIF is a full root motion <coughs> character. And we kind of realized, um, as we was doing the hybrid between half root motion and half not root motion, um, it wasn't working because of the blend problems. So then we went uh, full in with a root motion character. Uh, so all the animations for the turns, for the walk starts, were all root motion driven. But then we realized that if we needed the characters to step three, three steps to the right or do a turn that's 45 degrees, 90 degrees, we always needed an animation to compensate for that. So we ended up in this situation where we needed the character to stand in a very specific location but they physically didn't have the animations to make that turn, so they would just circle the point infinitely <laughs> because that was the only turn they were able to do. Um, um, we also, you know, sped the game up for like uh -huh. ten minutes, at like ten times the speed. He never reached the point, <laughs> <laughs> so we really couldn't use it. Um, so, what's this layered approach that we're talking about? Um, the idea is to have something functional as quick as possible, so that. Uh, if Pete's trying to make a design and he needs the AI or, or Johnny's using the AI for anything, they can use it even though it might not look great. Um, it had to be non-destructive, so adding any uh, more fidelity can't break the system, removing any fidelity can't break the system. Um, again, just it being modular and independent. Mm -hmm. um, it needs to have very little code because Martin wants a life. Um, stick to UE4 defaults as much as possible. Again, let Epic do the hard work with nav systems and then exploit them. Uh, and then, <coughs> where possible, stick to a constant speed and rotation rate just because it makes life a lot easier, um, especially math. <laughs> so if you see the problem there, that's what exactly. she looks like if you just bring a um, 
uh, walk cycle in and she navigates uh, from one side of the room to the other. That's literally just with two states blended from idle to walk in based on speed. We sh I should mention that um, when she turns there, if you set the turn rate faster, it does look better. It still doesn't look great. She's still kind of ping-ponging from point to point. Um, so that was like the main thing that we wanted to fix. Yeah. So first layer uh, was turning on spot. Um, so just so that she's able to get to a point, stop, turn around, get to a next point, and she doesn't have to worry about anything. Um, this for some games might even be shippable, like if, if they're just like hordes of enemies that are going to attack you and they need to stop at any point to attack you or anything, that I mean would work perfectly fine. Uh, but for a game like ours where they have to traverse environments quite a lot, uh, it wasn't going to work. Um, cool tip for this, once you're doing your turn in place, because you don't want your animators animating 20,000 angles of rotation, um, I think we ended up with uh, three angle animations yes. uh, on each direction. Um, and what we do is we scale the play rate um, of the animation uh, by basically taking the time that uh, the animation takes a turn uh, and the time that we know our rotation rate will actually reach the angle that they want to rotate. Mm -hmm. And then we just scale the play rate so that it kind of matches. So yeah. she's only playing three animations there, but there's not too much foot sliding. So the effect that would give is if the character needed to turn 90 degrees, um, the animation is, is been animated to the exact turn rate we know the character is going to move at. But if the turn was 120, uh, the animation would finish before the turn's finished. So in that instance, we would slow the animation down so that because the turn's taking longer, we also slow the animation down so that takes longer. And then there's always motion in the character. Um, I assume that there's better ways of doing this now with space warping. Um, I know that's a thing. We haven't really taken a look at it, probably. But we'll probably take a look at it at some point. Um, one thing I would say is that slower is better with this stuff. So. Her rotating slowly, if, if you're having really short angles, just don't add any rotation, just make a rotate on the spot, or maybe yeah. you know make a shuffle feet animation. Um, uh, just make a few animations. Uh, we've got the animations that we asked for, so can we click on So the animations that we made for these, uh, turn on spot 45 and minus 45, turn on the spot minus 90 and 90, and turn on spot 180 and minus 180. Yeah. Uh, the 180 will actually work really well for a really large breadth of angles. So. I think, I think anything over 100 or 120 degrees, we just use the 180 animation, um, which seems to work fine for us. Stage two. Okay, I should talk about this one as well. So, uh, we started adding more layers. Uh, so the first one was walk start, so that she could start walking and kind of gain an acceleration to a point. Um, Unreal does come with an acceleration. Uh, we just didn't want to be restricted to animate to that. So we set up a system in which um, we write the curve of the speed from Maya uh, onto a custom attribute in the model. Um, and the way you calculate that is pretty straightforward. The code is really simple for this. I've, I've been coding for like we only weeks and I managed to do something to actually get that curve. Uh, but you just get the speed would equal the translate x value of your characters moving forward uh, and it's fetch an x uh, of the frame in front minus obviously the uh, frame b behind it, and the difference between that is just divide it by the frames a second that you're running at, and it will give you the speed of the character. Um, so yeah, we created a custom tool for that, that bakes the um, speed onto a curve. Custom attribute comes into Unreal, super easy to use. Do you want to zoom into a bit? So if you're interested how we applied the curve, in actually in Blueprints, um, the curve at the top was baked into the animation, like James was saying. Um, and then we literally just use the, the custom attribute get curve value uh, out of Unreal and just overwrite the character's max walk speed. So when the bull fires true, which is use speed, use speed curve, um, which is for any state that uses this kind of animation, uh, the speed of the character is controlled by the animation um, until it's over and then it goes back to either full speed or zero speed. We should mention that it is editing the max speed walk. Because Unreal has an acceleration, you want them to get to that speed as quick as possible so that you're editing it. So make your acceleration like yeah. 20 trillion. We kind of override the, the underlying one. And these were the animations that we used for that a little bit. Walk start left, walk start right, and just walk, walk straight forward. Just work. Walk stops. So walk stops was kind of the same principle in terms of uh, baking curves into animations. Um, but obviously for the walk start, we were baking in acceleration. For the walk stops, we have baking in deceleration. Um, we we could have done this in blueprints, um, just 
to fire when the walk stop animation should have triggered. Uh, because of some stuff that we did later, we ended up doing this in code because it was just revealing um, nav points that were available to us on the path. Um, so basically all this does, it just checks for the next point um, in the character's nav path. And if that's the last point in the nav, when you're X amount of units away from that, it goes into the walk end animation and finishes on the spot. Um, and the distance of that walk end is dictated by Rob, the animator. Um, so it just matches up with the animation. So we say when this character is 67 units away from the endpoint, play this animation, and then in theory, they should land on the spot, which they do nine times out of ten. There is a slight issue with this, which is uh, NavPass have an acceptable radius of, hey, I've reached my point, and as soon as they hit that, uh, then move uh, command will just stop because, hey, I've reached my point. So it'll completely kill the velocity of the character. It, they're technically not in a moving state. So fiddle with the number until you get something that doesn't give you too much foot sliding. You'll see where it actually stops, you get a tiny bit of foot sliding. There. Weep. So, um, just play with the value. You can probably get it perfect, but just I guess play with the value. Yeah. Uh, and then that was dead simple. The walk stop because she's always walking linearly. Um, it works fine just to have one animation with no need for turns. Cool. So, okay, this was the yes. most complicated issue because um, it was the kind of crux of the problem of trying to navigate around a few points uh, and turning corners. So, um, you can see she's still a bit rigid there because she's literally just forward motion and turning. Mm -hmm. um, code was needed to so solve this issue uh, uh, because we had to kind of write a system that would take her technically off the path that she's navving in, but still nav, so that she still knows that she has to get to the next point. Uh, but she's not no longer following the kind of straight lines that the nav draws. Um, Martin would probably be better at explaining a so, bit of this if you want to. Yeah. Um, so essentially, if you actually look, I'm going to run up to the front. <laughs> um, so if you actually look at like the way the nav path works, the actual complex generation is all done in the generating the nav path. Once you're actually the path following component, there's relatively simple things like you could crack it open in source code, and there's like one the kind of primary root function is just follow the nav path, and it's like you have a target location and you move towards it. So if you're feeling cavalier enough, you can basically say, don't do that when I say, and just do this instead. Um, and then it was kind of just working on faith and a little bit of logic that we kind of worked out where they do actually need to be. Um, <laughs> so as you can see here, this is kind of like our intended path would be uh, the red lines is what the nav path is going to generate. And we basically say, similar to the walk stops, we're saying, we know what your turn rate is, so you turn 80 degrees a second, and we know it's a 90 degree turn, so it's going to take 1.12 seconds or whatever the turn. So start turning 1.12 seconds early. Um, and essentially, the, the primary thing that makes this work is that we just keep moving the character forward on their facing direction during that time. So all it took was a little bit of bashing our heads against tables, because yeah. the, the maths was not the uh, most immediately the kind of clear thing. But I was actually wrong on this. It was James who got this. So it's, this, it's not that hard. Because you're walking at a constant speed and you're rotating at a constant rotation rate, the curve that you're going to draw is a perfect circle every time. Uh, because of engine things and variable frame rate, it might vary a little mm. bit. But I mean, you're pretty confident that if you want to line, l uh, kind of land on the same straight that you would if you were just ping pong it, you just need to figure out the radius of that circle. So the radius is just the speed at which the character's moving divided by in radians the turn rate. So turn rate, which in degrees uh, in Unreal, divided by 360, you get radians, and then multiply it by two pi because maths. And then you get the radius that you need. And I should say that it's this is good is a good starting point uh, to figure out when to curve, and you'll know that you'll land on the nav. But uh, you can play around with overshooting a little because even if the character lands around here, it knows that the next point is that. So it'll just con you know wait till it's aligned to the next point and just continue going on. Yeah, we didn't kind of plan for a perfect world situation. So the only the really the only complex bit is working out how far ahead of the point you start turning. But past that, all we're doing is performing like a dot product where essentially we're saying, are you facing your target point yet? And if the character technically overshot, that wouldn't be a problem. They would just keep turning, keep turning, keep turning until they're facing the next point. And that way you don't get a weird snap once you start navving again. And your nav path's already there and generated. You don't need to do anything strange. You just say, okay, go back to what you're doing now. Um, so, yeah, that seems like that. Yeah, okay, I'm going to scuttle back to my chair now. <laughs> so, I mean, you can see the results. He's still really quite rigid. Um, 
So if you see, we didn't have to offer any animations with it, which is great because Rob could work on other stuff. Yeah, it's literally uh, just using the walk forward animation because the path is being curved for us. It just looks like she was doing a curved animation. Which is cool. uh, you might be tempted to do like a turning around a circle animation to play at that time. We did that. Oh. Didn't look that good. So we like we find that if if you start editing like just the torso and the head kind of procedurally. Uh, it looks a lot better than if you just start playing animation there. So that's next. Mm -hmm. I'll let you talk about this. So yes. So because we felt the character was just really stiff and rigid as the, as she was going around corners, um, we wanted to get a bit of head rotation, a bit of anticipation, so it looked like she was kind of turning and moving into the corners as she went. Um, so we started by just having the the head rotation overridden, um, so the character looked at the next move point, their immediate destination. Which works, but then as the character got closer and closer to that point, they would start to look sort of down at the ground. So we revealed the functioning code that let us get the next point after that. So then we said, have the character look at their immediate move point so they're looking straight forwards. When they get close enough to that, look at the next one. And that kind of worked. But then as we got to the immediate point, it kind of shifted the nav points on. So it ended up with the head just sort of bouncing between different places and the lurk times were, were a bit out of control. So it wasn't very smooth and we couldn't control it very well. So then we kind of come up with this concept which we called Uwe Piece of Candy. James called it that, not me. Um, but the basic idea is that there's a yellow, the yellow sphere that's in front of the character that kind of stays on the nav path, uh, but a certain amount of units ahead of the character. Uh, and then the character's head is rotated to face that um, sphere. She's trying to catch the yellow ball, but she can't. Exactly. <laughs> so, I just imagine James Woods, like, ooh, piece of candy. So the only sort of bit of trickery we did with this was um, we had a function in code that basically gave us every point on the nav path. Um, and we would say, if the character's too far away from their immediate, that's fine, look straight at it. As you got closer to that, we, uh, we then looked for the next nav point and then also checked the distance the character was from it. If the character was too close, um, we went to the next one and we just kept pushing that back until we found a distance that was far enough away that kind of looked natural so the character's head swayed back and forth. Um, put some lurk times on that as well so the yellow ball moves smoothly and as long as it stays in front of the character, which it does now, it kind of gives that nice sort of uh, anticipatory motion to the character. Um, and then we just worked out the rotation from uh, the nav path look at target, which is where the yellow ball is being rendered, uh, worked out the rotation to that and then that was what was applied uh, to the head rotation of the character. Um, one thing I will mention as well, in, in this these examples that we're showing, as she's turning the curve, we never we didn't change the rotation rate so that it actually is as nice as it can be just because we forgot. Um, yeah. But a slower rotation rate, which is interesting because when she's ping-ponging around, it's better if it's faster. A slower rotation rate works a lot better uh, when she's uh, navving like this. Mm -hmm. But it also means that it's going to make the radius of your turn a little larger. So be careful, you know, figure out how big are the spaces that your character is going to navigate and make sure that you, know, you, you can deal with it. The sort of last thing that we did on this was uh, when it was just head rotation, it still kind of looked a little bit rigid, it still kind of looked a bit strange when she went around corners. Um, so there's a slight blend space on the shoulders, um, and the only sort of thing we did with that, we worked out the angle of the shoulders the same way we did the head. But then because we'd done math to work out the head's rotation, and then that was kind of added on by the shoulders rotation, we then had to sort of do math and compensate the head back um, by the angle that we'd moved the shoulders by. So that was where the blend space just looking left and right, assuming this is in play. So, yeah. dead subtle on the shoulders just to give a little bit of sway. I think we delayed, um, the shoulders don't turn until she's immediately at the corner, so she immediately turns. Yeah, so whereas head. the head does it a little few steps before. So she kind of looks, half looks into the turn, and when she gets to the corner, her shoulders fully swing, and it kind of looks like she puts her weight into the turn. And it looks pretty cool, I think. So then, so that's the last layer that we've added so far. Uh, obviously we can add as many as we want. Uh, but the final line graph in the same machine was pretty straightforward, uh, just for locomotion. So this is uh, just the state machine that handles our locomotion. So you can see all the turns, turn left, turn right. This is just basically turning. And then walk start and left. And then the walk stops, depending on which foot you're actually going to land with, we play a different walk stop. Yeah. Um, then the anim graph was just basically just applying the blend space for the shoulders and applying the uh, modified bone for the head, so it looks. And we put all of that behind a bool, because um, obviously if the character's just walk into a destination, they're going to look at their path and they're going to move into it. We also wanted to be able to overwrite that 
if the character's looking at an object in the world or another character or something. So we kind of have functionality for both. They can put their attention on something else, but if they're not looking at anything in particular, they'll just look where they're walking and hopefully looks natural. Yeah, so as I mentioned, this only handles the, the locomotion side. Um, any other animations, yes. whether they're doing for montages or things, um, slots, this isn't actually part of the project. It's just a locomotion setup. Mm -hmm. So for comparison's sake, we put the original system against a new cool yeah. way of doing it. That's where we started on the left. That was just literally just the two states, idle to walk, and then the culmination of everything we just said was with the video on the right, um, which looks a lot more fluid, I think. It's subtle, which is what we like about it. It's kind of, uh, the characters kind of look like they're moving and navigating through the world, um, and it's literally just animations and that little bit of code that we added to it, and that makes it look so fluid. Um, I think it's better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's it. Any questions? <laughs> if you want to reach any of us at White Paper Games, all our emails are our names plus White Paper Games. I put the people that did this part of the thing in here just because if you want to talk to Rob about animation, you can talk to Rob. Uh, yeah. Any questions about anything? Yeah? Um, when you were taking the corners, it, seemed, it looked like it would skip a nav point. Does that cause any issue? Because um, like you, you have the nav points in the corner and the, and the bend kind of cut it off. Yeah, so she does this. Yeah. So she skips this, right? Yeah. So we just say you're still on the nav. Um, you're technically no longer on your nav path, but you're still part, you're still navin. You're still trying to get to your final destination. So once she gets here, she just looks for her next point. Matt and I think code. It basically says, oh, where's your next destination? And that's what she's going to aim towards. And once she reaches that point, she just continues on. Yeah, when she, when she starts curving, we basically say ignore everything. And we just look ahead to where the next point is going to be as soon as you're done curving. As long as we haven't made a complete like, ruin of the system, you should be facing the right direction anyway. So we just say your next nav destination is the one that was the one ahead of the one we're going to. Anything else?